Hello and welcome back to what I believe to be the last episode of Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, otherwise known as Zero Escape and the first nonary game that we also now know to be the second, technically the second nonary game in this universe, technically. Uh, I plan to just go through this unlock i think i can just immediately jump over here maybe because i technically do have the uh key it says because anytime that i've obtained previous knowledge it says that i just have it available to me unlocked and everything so maybe if i just jump over here maybe it'll work i don't know for certain that being said after i left a previous episode to let out my dog i did some thinking to myself why would mysterious number zero equate to a six that's because possibly number zero is number 10 the 10th person like i've always been saying or not always have been saying have been theorizing what is 10 in hexadecimal Hexa hexadecimal right whatever hexadecimal 10 is 16 six i it, maybe possibly it would it should be seen as 17 but that might be a theory as to why it is six. I don't know. Uh, possibly in the future route, we don't really need. Uh, we don't really need zero. Although Clover, I feel, does obtain the bracelet right in the other route. I don't know. Let's get going into it. The three left behind. Oh. Can I experience this? God. June. So, what do you want to do, Junpei? What do you mean, what do I want to do? What can we do? What the hell is that? Shh, quiet! So that's Snake trying to get out. Where is it coming from? Could it be? Uh, hey, I think it's coming from this coffin. You're right. Let's open it. But how? What are those muscles for? For show? You're telling me to force it open? Just shut up and try! <sighs> Damn it! Man, it won't even budge. Not another one. Hmm. It was one, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. If I remember correctly. Yeah, looks like it. Do you think we have to put in the right password or it won't open? I think so. Whoever or whatever's inside this thing wants out. And now. I know that. But how? Without a passcode, I, I don't think there's much we can do. Isn't there a hint somewhere? Well, let's look for one. Ugh, there's nothing here. Or, hold on, before, before I trigger an ending, let me go through the flow. Am I supposed to acquire the notice all the way back here, like just as a player? Like one four three eight three four two one. Am I just supposed to put that in myself? I don't feel like the game would allow me to do that because like everything's pre scripted, but who knows? Not making this easy, are they? <sighs> I should have the yellow key to unlock the yellow lock. What's the passcode? Which said it was unlocked, I believe. What am I supposed to do? How can we figure it out? I need something. Hmm. Why? What? What? Why? Why am I experiencing this? I mean, I understand why I'm experiencing this. The player? But I don't know why Junpei is experiencing this, if he's even experiencing it in, at all. 
truth had gone, truth had gone, and truth had gone. Ah, uh, now truth is asleep in the darkness of the sinister hand. Wait, what? What the hell was that? That voice? Huh? What? What's up? Is... Okay, Junpei is zero now, is where my mind is running, because he did say he has he was having problems, like, remembering something, or his head was hurting or something, when he was talking to... He was pissed off at... Ace when talking to Clover. Okay. Huh. Okay. Huh? Oh, um, <clears throat> uh, nothing. Press the buttons. Right, left, uh... Right, left, right, left, right, left. What was the script? Truth is gone, truth is gone, and then truth is gone. Yeah, so right, left. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. Huh? Huh? Hey, what the hell were those numbers? Oh my gosh, are those... Okay, so... Like I've been asking from the very beginning, what is this... Okay, l let me run through the roster again. Nerdy number nine... Okay, Lotus's daughters... Seven's the cop... Six is June, that we still have no idea... Five is myself, which I now believe to be zero... But at the end, I was going back and forth between Junpei and Zero. Uh, five. Clover was in Nevada. Santa's sister was involved. Um, two is Snake, who actually was a part of the first Nonary game. And Ace made the first Nonary game. So, nerdy number nine, which I believe to be... Another pharmaceutical head, possibly. Um, and then myself, that I believe to be zero. So then why is June involved? Is this like some sick, twisted thing to get us closer together, Junpei? I don't know. Huh. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. Mm-hmm. Here comes Snake. Huh. No way! Wh Why are you... <laughs> mm. Oh? Is that you, Clover? I apologize for worrying you. <laughs> Snake! You? Why? Junpei? And Seven? Is that you? Is everyone else there as well? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. You're you're back. Gently <laughs> now. My body's still a little weak. Oh, you're back. You're back. You're really here. Oh, you're back. Come now, what's gotten into you? You're acting as though I've returned from the grave. Not as though you did. I really thought you were dead. Huh? You jerk! Idiot! 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 <sighs> I see. I believe I understand things rather well now. Thank you. In the shower room, there is a dead body wearing my clothes. Now that I'm seeing, uh, paying attention more to his clothing, why does he have the mercury symbol on him? Like, well, that's, what's that about? Because of that, you thought that I was dead, correct? Now that I think about it again, I mean, uh, prosopagnosia, we're going to go with that 
again. Uh, uh, random person that Snake traded clothes with, which I still don't know if he recalls at all. Um, uh, Ace would have killed whoever the other person was, whoever that is. Um, with Nine's bracelet, uh, still unanswered questions. Yeah. You also discovered a corpse in the captain's quarters, and Santa turned on you here, in this room. Do I have it straight? Well, the dead body in the captain's quarters is a surprise. Mm -hmm. Sorry, there wasn't a good time to tell you. Don't worry about it. Well then, I've got a pretty decent idea of what happened while I was indisposed, but it's still something of a mystery who did all this, and why. The corpse in the shower room that looked like me. And the corpse in the captain's quarters. Why were they killed in the way they were? You don't know? No. Why would I? The guy in the shower room. We don't know who he is, so let's just call him Mr. X. Okay. <laughs> anyway, this Mr. X is wearing Snake's clothes. But you're wearing some kind of weird robes. Mm -hmm. That means someone took your clothes and put them on Mr. X. Yeah. We need to figure out who that was. I apologize, but I have no idea who might have done this to me. I only just now woke up. I was unconscious during all the events you just described to me. They must have undressed me and changed my clothes during that time. When were you knocked out? When we split up to look for the red. Where did they get you? Do you remember? It was a small room in one of the hallways on sea deck. It's a small room in one of the hallways on sea deck. So is there like a back entrance? What happened? The same thing that happened to every one of us when we were abducted. Mm, okay. A canister releasing some sort of gas was thrown into the room. I believe the gas is some sort of incapacitating agent. Then that means it was... Zero. Looks that way, huh? There's nothing else I have to tell you. When I woke up, I was in this coffin. So did Ace already kill Zero? Hmm. Why? Why did Zero make Mr. X wear Snake's clothes? How would that benefit Zero? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah, Zero would not... Yeah, Zero... Yeah, Mr. X was the one that was all loosey-goosey and ended up getting killed. Hmm. Also, oh yeah, I, I just remembered. Uh, I went back in, like, my recording for when we first saw uh, Snake come about, and then he ends up uh, sacrificing himself to kill Ace. I just want to mention... He he takes off his arm to take off the bracelet, but then in the next few engagements, he has both arms. Does it, like, slip off one way, or does, like, because, like, the arm isn't attached to the body, it no longer uh, feels a heartbeat, so it can be just taken off of the arm itself, and then he just can put his arm back on? I don't know. Who knows? I don't get it. What the hell does any of it mean? No idea how I got the passcode for the coffin either. Truth had gone, truth had gone, and truth had gone. Where did those words come from? Why did I feel compelled to push the buttons on the bracelet after hearing them? All I know is my fingers moved on their own. It was like I did it subconsciously. Mm hmm, because it's already implanted in you. Or because somebody knows the information, the Matrix allowed him to already know it. Hmm. Maybe? I don't get it. What the hell does any of it mean? Also, Snake and Clover had been subjects in a similar experiment nine years ago. The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The morphogenetic field, not the, uh, ba -ba 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 matrix. <laughs> the first is epiphany, and the other is danger. And, and, someone did actually die. Mm -hmm. Girl, her name was... Another experiment conducted on the same ship nine years ago. Girl had died doing it. Akane's name has never been mentioned out loud. Is the name going to be Akane? 
morphogenetic field theory. The two murders, switching clothes, the no more game. Huh. Zero. He's the ringleader. The person who trapped nine of us on this sinking ship. Zero should know everything. If we can uncover Zero's identity, all of our questions will be answered. <sighs> At any rate, we'll have plenty of time to decipher the details later. For now, it is of utmost importance that we escape. Junpei, it was 4.30 the last time you checked the clock, yes? Uh, I'll take this game's word on it because it has been a long ass time since I have, like, engaged with a clock at all as a reader. That means we have less than an hour. We must hurry. Hey, uh, how are we gonna get out of here? Isn't that obvious? Through the other number nine door. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. We Which are up to nine. Open the door. Yep. Don't tell me you hadn't figured that out. <laughs> Come on, you gotta tell me these things. I, uh, assumed you'd figured it out. <sighs> Forget it, let's just get going. All right, you guys ready to go? Yes. Yep. <sighs> Not yet. Huh? What? Before we go in, I'd like to check something. You want to check something? Yeah, but before I do, Seven, could you pull the lever? I want to make sure we can verify with just the four of us. What do you mean? We don't need... Just do it, all right? But if the door opens, don't go in yet, okay? I don't know why I clicked. Sorry, that was... Eh. <sighs> Please, this is really important. I really need to check this, okay? Work with me here. Fine. Huh. Does it only require me to at least go through? Oh, wait. Did... Uh... Ace, Lotus, and Nerdy Number Nine's bracelet went through this door, right? So that's not right. That theory's wrong. All right. That means the four of us can go into door nine. So, you knew that. It's obvious. Obvious. Yeah. You're right. It is. Now, what happens if we add Zero's bracelet? What? Zero's bracelet? Why don't you take it out, Clover? Oh, okay. I don't know why we're fully going through this. Uh, Ace has Nine's bracelet. Okay. One. I, I would have to write this out. This is, uh, okay. Hold on. Let. So, I think we're meant to have Zero's bracelet as well. And I think I am right with the hexadecimal, because maybe, maybe we're going to see 16, and we're supposed to have, uh, the Zero bracelet. Maybe that's why? I don't know. You did know I had it. I picked it up because I thought it might be useful sometime. <laughs> this was on the left hand of the corpse in the captain's quarters. If you look at it, you can see it's got a zero on the face. Just to make this a little easier to talk about, uh, I'm going to call the guy we found dead in the captain's quarters, uh, Cap. God damn it, Mr. Zero. <laughs> then I should be able to open door nine with just me, Clover, and his bracelet. Though the big question is... If Cap is the mastermind of this game, would he really put one of these bracelets on? Anyway, uh, let's just give it a shot. Clover, give me your hand. Uh, okay. Now the captain's bracelet. And pull the lever. Mm -hmm. I knew it. So it's not just me. Yeah. Now, what does this tell us? Maybe the bracelet has to be on your wrist in order for it to work? Nope. No, that's impossible. Did you see how the panel showed a third asterisk when I scanned Cap's bracelet? So it works. It does indeed work. But zero is not zero. Whether or not it's on your wrist doesn't matter. All you have to do is put the bracelet near the panel for it to register. Hmm. Huh. Looks like you're right. See? So what does that mean? There's only one possibility. That bracelet isn't the number zero. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. That's right. Then what number is it? 
It's six. How do we figure that out using our numbers? Uh, it should work. Uh, let's see, six to nine. We would need three at most, so either 21. We can get the four. 12. We can get 12 with seven and... Five. Four, nine, plus two, eleven, eleven plus six, nope. Can our group even figure this out? Seven plus nine, nine plus, nope. Hmm. Let's find out. Scan the bracelets with this combination. Okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Which one would work? Snake plus Junpei, 2 plus 7 is 9, or 2 plus 5 is 9, plus 6. Seven plus uh, 12. Oh. Did I do my math wrong? Am I stupid? Let's try 7, me, and Cap. If this combination opens the door, then Cap's bracelet is number 6. There we go. Hey, it opened! The door opened! What? Why? What does that mean? Was it Seven and I that did it before? As Isn't well? it obvious? Cap's bracelet is number six. But doesn't it say zero? This isn't a zero. The symbol on here isn't a number zero. It's... O isn't a number zero. O, what is O? Hold on. Let me bring out the notes for that other one. Notes, what is O? O, 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 O. O is 24. Which is six. Oh, gotcha. It's a letter O. O? Whoa, wait a minute. I don't get it. I mean, we figured out that Cap's bracelet is six, right? Yeah. Does that mean there are two people with sixes? There is, most likely, only one person with a six. But I don't get it. What about June? Well, this is only an educated guess, but I think June's number was never six to begin with. Hers was zero. 16 is 10. Her bracelet was flipped. Okay, you bitch. Okay, I was right. Eh, I don't know if I'm right to suspect you at all. Yeah, uh, her number would result would yield the same result regardless. Would it? No. And all those times that we would require six to get to the next thing. In other words, June's real number is nine. That seems the most likely. Then all this number door stuff was just a load of crap? Why would you say that? Because if June is nine, then the numbers wouldn't match up. Right. Here, look. All List the doors. All the numbered doors June's gone through. Yeah. I'll let you know what I'm writing, okay, Snake? <laughs> okay. Okay, so if we change six to three plus five is and uh eight plus eight is sixteen. Is that a 16? No, because I would add another 7 on. But, okay. And that's everything. I wrote down which door she went into and with whom. And I wrote what all the numbers were. So if you switch 9 and wherever there's a 6, the numbers don't work. Right. 
If the digital root is 7, then you can't open door 4. If the digital root is 2, then you can't open door 8. Clover, do you notice anything interesting on that list? Seems to always be 2? Um... Santa and June always went together. Santa, June, and Lotus. Uh, there's a f there's a few things that stand out, but I don't know which thing specifically. What do you mean? You're talking about three, right? Three, or door number three. Three. Santa's always in the room with her. That's okay. what you're saying, isn't it? Yes, that's right. What about it? Six plus three is nine. That happens regardless. That's quite simple, really. You told me that the first time you came to this room, Santa was the first to refuse to leave June behind. Now, doesn't that beg the question why? Why would Santa do such a thing? The only person she's dated is 18 men times zero. Did I fucking pick up on that from the beginning? <laughs> oh my god. The answer is easy. Because Santa can't open door nine with only seven in Lotus. Of course, there's only one reason for that. His number isn't actually three. Santa's real number, seven? Would you be so kind as to modify my sister's equations? Yeah, sure. This is what you were getting at, right, Snake? Hmm. Hmm. Modify them in what way? Nine and three? What are we modifying them to? Hmm. Thank you. Nine and zero. That is exactly right, Seven. Yeah, so then three has never been a part of the equation? Ever? Hmm. It is logical. Hmm. But in the end, Santa and June being together, they, re they would still need a third person always, and we've known this since the beginning. Why? Why would he make it so that it requires a third person if only the two of them were to escape in the end. Santa's true number wasn't three. It was zero. No way. Santa is zero? And June was nine, not six. Conversely, Santa was zero, not three. Plus three and minus three, they cancel one another out. Nothing appears out of order. Santa was still playing by the rules of the nonary game this whole time. Mm-hmm. Precisely. So you're saying Santa planned this whole thing? I'm not sure if he acted alone or not, but I think it is safe to conclude that he is zero, if my hypothesis is correct. <laughs> hmm. Getting revenge on Ace, but like I said, like all this time, just put a round in the back of his skull. Again, just using his own creation against him, so. Snake's hypothesis. Something doesn't seem right. June's bracelet being flipped. Even if that were possible, that would mean there are two number nine bracelets. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case? <sighs> Nerdy number nine was a six. All right, that's enough talking. Wait, but if... Okay, who did... Who did number nine use? Nerdy number nine is actually a six, and he went through door five. He enlisted the help of Clover, who was four. Four plus six would be ten. With one, it would have required another Clover. So, thinking about it the other way around, nine and... Nine and Clover again, that's thirteen. Required... Did they... Did he use Snake? One and... Nine and four, thirteen... Oh, no, it was Ace, right? I think it was Ace, Clover, and Nine. Five. Yeah, five, and then Nine just repeats it. Yeah. 
So ace, clover, and six, would that still work? Five and six? No, that wouldn't work. Hmm. Let's go. It's high time we went through that door. Maybe that's what Junpei is thinking about. Oh, it's right there. Oh. All right. Let's keep going. I think these stairs go to the bottom deck. Looks dry. Let's head down. Hey, it's a Hmm. That is Neptune, because that's the sign. That's the trident of Poseidon. Is that what I'm supposed to get? Because we've already seen Uranus. This is the Neptune symbol. There must be a key around here somewhere. Uh, Neptune key. I only have the Uranus key card. It's a different planet. Plus, it's the wrong kind of key. Mm-hmm. So that means we're gonna have to go down to the Forest of Knowledge, which is a library. Let's turn around and go back for now. Wherever yeah. that is. It's on the bottom floor. Hey, another door. And a card reader this time. Mars? But this one's got a dot in it. Does Mars have that? No. This is straight up. Mars goes off to the side. What is this door? Is this Pluto? It's the Uranus symbol. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm dumb. This is the place. Hmm. Hmm. <gasps> hmm. It's totally full of books. There's so many. I don't know where to look. Yeah. All right. If we want to get through that door out there, we need the Neptune key. I say we split up and look for it. Okay. Very well. Sure thing. Good. Let's get started then. We don't have a lot of time. Hurry. Hold on. Time. Time out. Time out. How did Ace get through the other that that same door okay who who did he enlist the help of before ace lotus and the number nine bracelet yeah again which can't be six hmm. um <laughs> How did they get through if we went through the double doors before and we're now going through the single door that requires the Neptune key that you can only acquire by using the Uranus card? Eh, maybe he did it. Who knows? Alice sleeps in a small chamber past the forest of knowledge. So there's a hidden room here somewhere. As he began his search for reasons he didn't fully understand, Junpei felt those particular words float through his mind. Escape room. So there's definitely a secret entrance that maybe we acquire through a book or something. Okay. Yeah, there's not much to go through right now. Okay, so menu, is it map? Oh, wait, I'd have to... Yeah, it's the other map. Yeah, I can't look at it right now. Oh, shit, I didn't mean to click that. Energy theory, huh? I don't even understand that damn title. It's like it, all the... It looks like this shelf's all science technology. Okay, let's look at this first. There's a note on the ta There's a note on the table. Lights to the books. Huh. What does that mean? Lights to the books. So we have to turn the lights onto the books? Interesting. Well, intelligence often hides itself in darkness. Have you ever thought about the pages of a book? Each page only sees, what, maybe two or three minutes of light before a reader is on to the next? They spend the rest of their lives locked in darkness. Rather like myself. That's horrible. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. Not at all. I live in the darkness, yes. But that has gifted me with the ability to catch the truths others might miss. I can hear the voices hidden in the darkness, you might say. Hmm. Okay, what is this coat rack thing? It's a coat rack. Okay. Like a place where you hang coats and hats and stuff. Well, this one's not too big, so maybe just hats. Interesting. What would a coat rack be here for? What? Okay, I interact with that. 
I I noticed these books up here like stood out for some reason. I'm gonna have to pull them for some reason. And more books. Uh, open, uh, O-P-E-N, open here, find bulb, open here, find bulb, I can already figure that out, okay, okay, I'll look at this, what's the deal with these titles, and they're all just gibberish, mm, not really, hey, what if we, like, switch them around? Switch them around? Yeah. What if we move them around? Maybe they'll spell something. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Heck, it's worth a shot. Can I do it? Switch that. And there. Open here, find bulb. How about this? Okay. Looks like putting those books in the right order opened this thing up. This thing right up. <laughs> that was a piece of cake. Hooray! <laughs> You did it, Junpei. I guess that turned out well enough. So the letters of the titles spell out, Open here, find bulb. Yep. So I have to turn the lights on the books for some reason. The light bulb looks looks like it's brand new. And it's really big, so it'll make a lot of light. Interesting. Our property value's going up in space these, two, uh, these days, too. Man, I guess times are tough for aliens, too. This one says cosmic inflation. Mm. I don't I don't need that type of shit <laughs> uh, going on. Okay, uh, how do you interact? This one says transition of ex extinct species. We need to hurry up or we're going to end up in, a page in pages of a book like that. Paleontology. This one's about fossils, right? Ammonites are na are pretty nasty looking. Paleontology. Mother Nature. Is that some sort of book about hippie chicks? Uh, probably not. Except perhaps tangential tans tangentially. Tully? Shully. Tangentially. Ah, fuck. It's most likely about environmental protection. I was just trying to make a joke. Dude, hippie chicks? Really? Mother Nature, Paleontology... Introduction to Geology, huh? Thinking about Earth, even when you're on the ocean. Kind of romantic in a way, I guess. These books all stand out. Why? I'm gonna... Can I take this? I cannot take the ladder, but I have a feeling when I look over, I can. The handrail is made of metal. Can I... I can go down. Interesting. Okay. Energy theory, development of nanotechnology materials, interactions between shortwave energy and matter. What else have we got? Just listening to you read those titles is giving me a headache. Can't say a fancy technology stuff and I get... <laughs> Can't say fancy technology stuff and I get along real well. Keep on talking about that stuff and you're gonna put me to sleep. Okay, interesting. Uh, I don't think the scaffold setup is in the shape of a cross. Interesting. Cross has got to be important for some reason. Okay. That's a way down as well. So there's two staircases. Let me look at the map. There's only... Yeah, there are two staircases. Gotcha. Interesting. The big opening is the door to the library. It's pretty impressive. Almost looks like it, the door to the shrine or a church or something. There's another door after it, then a passageway beyond that. At the end of that passageway is a door with that Neptune symbol engraved on it. Hurry up. We need to find the key with the mark of Neptune. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like a job for the best brother and sister team in the world. And it's like Seven Eye don't exist. More stuff. I can always interact with these later, because I don't really obtain much. Hmm, interesting. Stuff down here. Okay, so, if I go down, uh, hold on, going back here, if I go down these steps, I come here. Oh, it always brings me to this view. Interesting. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, we look here first, so let's look at this. 
uh, D A D K, kind one two three four five six seven, le le uh, le Bernese, le Bernese, I don't know. Owen Sheldrake, dad kind. What the hell is this? Wasn't that a German mathematician? Maybe it's a complication of his work. Liber, uh, Liebernese, whatever. This book is in German. It looks like it's the complete works of something. I've heard of it. Well, if Snake doesn't... Oh, I haven't heard of it? Is that... Is that what he said? Well, if Snake doesn't know what it is, I don't think we'll ever know. Owen, huh? Owen isn't enough to go on. Perhaps it's about the English Revolutionary? And Sheldrake. Sheldrake. Isn't Sheldrake... Sheldrake. Uh, was that the person that wrote the Titanic books? Something like that? Hmm? It says Sheldrake on the spine of the book. It's got the volume number written on the lower part of the spine. 1 to 8, 1 to 8, 1 to 7, 1 to 7. Interesting. I can't do anything with these just yet. I think this red book says Dead Kind on it. There's a yellow book with the name Labernese on it and sitting on the bookshelf. And Owen, it's light blue. Red, yellow, blue. What color is this? It's fine in this book. It's got the volume. No okay, the color of this one doesn't really matter, I guess. That's a weird book, Junpei. Indian mathemat mathematics. <laughs> That's funny. Why is that funny? Okay. Stairs? What the hell is this? Okay, I have one light bulb. Can I put them anywhere? There's three lights on this thing. They aren't very bright, though. Hey, did we find some... Wait, so there are three lights just activating right now? Hey, didn't we find some kind of really powerful light bulb earlier? Why don't you put that in one of those light bulbs? Yeah. Okay, so the light's going to be cast in the spiral, I think, and it's going to show certain ones. Oh, well, it'll get a lot brighter, but... But if there are three lights, that means three light bulbs. There won't be much point unless we can replace all three bulbs. We need three light bulbs, huh? Hmm. Okay, so I need to find the other three. Astronomy? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, what's this? Ah, Da Vinci Code, gotcha. In the middle of the glass is a cylinder lock. You know, the kind of lock where you rotate the numbers around until you got the right ones on it. The right ones to open it. What the hell is this? It's like they just gave us the answer. It's like they just gave us the answer? Guess I might as well just give it a shot. Hint. What? No, 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 no. I'm not I'm not doing that. Why hold on. Oh, you mean up here, okay. That's what the hint was about. Okay, it, w it would just bring up the other screen of the Nintendo DS. 632415. 632415. Oh, shit. 632415. Uh, 632415, right? Oh. Oh, oh, hold on. There we are. What? Oh, was I, like, going back and forth somehow? I have no idea how I did it. You did it, Junpei! Yay! I don't know why, but I don't really feel particularly happy about being praised for that. Oh, whatever. At least the lock's open now. Let's see if we can get it open, alright? Uh, that still looks bolted. Oh. Okay. Uh, green. Okay. All six books seem to be pointing at the cylinder number lock. Okay. <laughs> Another light bulb. So where is the last one gonna be? This iron plate is bolted down. I don't think it's a door. I think it's just a wall. Okay. Hmm. Let's go up the stairs again. Have a look. What did this say? There's a note on top of the table. It says, Lights to the Books. Okay. There's gotta be a reason. 
Wait, is this another one over here that I... Oh, wait, no. Yeah, open here, find a bulb. There's nothing here anymore. Alright, I think I've got these set up right, and they say, open here, find bulb. Well, that's pretty straightforward enough. I open this thing up, I get a light bulb. Okay, I was wondering if I would shift it over here. No. Okay. Hmm. Okay, looking at it from this view. Go here. There are four ways to look at this. Okay, I can't click up top. What are some of these automated robotic assembly line techniques? Huh. What's that? Some sort of comic book? Jeez, I guess boys really like that stuff, huh? No, you're thinking of a different sort of robot. This book is talking about automated machinery that's used to build things like cars. Am I supposed to find a German book or something? Communication and Computer Sciences, huh? It's a pretty generic title. To be honest, it's so vague, I don't really know what might what it might be about. An overview of photochemistry. I think whoever set this up wanted us to see the cover, not the spine. Yeah. Let's look at it, okay? Okay. Huh. Looks like that's a whole lot of space between those books. Look, Junpei! I think there's something hidden behind the books! Yep. I thought it was weird that it was the only one like that, but I could have sworn that there was one where... Uh, where's the main view? Main view's here. I thought I saw one over here like that, but... Okay. Let's go down and pop these in. It's a small enclosure with nine sides, okay. There are three of these things that look kind of like music stands. So the light's supposed to hit the music stands, the music stands are going to cast light upward, I think. Am I supposed to put something on these stands? On those stands. Oh, books, yeah. Alright, so there are three lights in here. I'm going to change these light bulbs, or these bulbs. Now they should... Casting a very bright light now. Whoa! Those light bulbs really make a difference. It's pretty bright in here now. Small enclosure. Uh, yep, and there are three sides and music stands. Am I supposed to put something on these stands? On those stands? Um. So if we try these, uh, dead, uh, dad kind, yellow book. Uh, okay, so I'm not taking those out. So can I take these books? Mm, seem to be pointing at the cylinder lock. Nope, that won't do me any good. Hmm. So, if I look at this note, is this gonna tell the guys to put the books in the light? There's a note on top of the table. It says, lights to the books. Maybe I have to click the actual cylinder again or something? Yep. Wow, it's so bright now! It's almost blinding! Alright, that means we just have to do this. What do you mean? A really bright light in here. Small enclosure. Yep, yeah, okay. Am I supposed to put something on those stands? I, I really don't know which books I'm supposed to take yet is the issue. It says Owen. It says Sheldrake on the spine. It's got the volume. Oh, yep, yeah, mm-hmm. Got that much figured out. Hmm. Oh, okay. If you back up here, you can still see a bulb over here from where this was. Interesting. The black hole hypothesis. Gamma ray astrophysics. I guess that bookshelf has astronomy theme. Okay, what if I... What's Hellenism? I think it's something like a fusion of Greek and Oriental culture. Okay, what about these books? Kids book? Here? Looks like a, it's a children's story about Native Americans. Hmm. Don't you think a random book like that is kind of suspicious? Yeah, so I'm looking out for these kind of spines? Interesting. Maybe you ought to hold on to it. Yeah. Cowboys and Indians. Okay. Phew. This one has some Native Americans on the cover. Hey, Junpei. Take a look at this one. Native Americans, huh? 
Maybe he's got some... Whoa! Pop a book. Huh. L Lilk. Kill. I don't know what orientation I'm gonna have to put the light in, but oh well. It's doing something. So I'm gonna have to look out for more pop-up books. What's that? This one... This one of them pop-up books? L-R-K, and then I think an I. Wait, L-R-K? Doesn't mean anything. Does it? K-R-L. Was there an R? I thought... I don't know. Well, you could make them K-R-L. Like, Curl or Carl. So did you find... I don't think I was supposed to find this one first. I think I was supposed to get a different one. So we got a picture book with the letters L, R, and K sticking out of it. I was definitely meant to find a different one. Okay, let's go back to the main view first. Uh, children's book. Theories of Cambrian explosion? Did a bomb go off somewhere near Cambria? Wrong kind of explosion. Roughly 500 million years ago, during what is known as the Cambrian period, research suggests that a variety of living organisms increased by an order of magnitude. Why that happened, however, is still something of a mystery. There are a number of theories. This book is most likely a collection of them. The theory of evolution. Heck, even I know this one. That's this Darwin guy, right? Well, yes and no. Charles Darwin wrote a book on, uh, called On the Origin of the Species. Yes, uh, pa 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 finches, right? Something, uh, some type of bird. In it, he put forth his theory of evolution. Yeah, I remember that part. It's called Natural Selection. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This book is called Mother Nature. I guess the books on this shelf are with transition of extinct species or about living creatures. Okay, so I have to find children's book. Is this a children's book? This one says, the golden rabbit and the moon on it. That means it's about a rabbit that lives on the moon? Rabbits are pretty cute, but what's with the moon stuff about? What's the moon stuff about? It's talking about Judas's tree. The Judas tree that is said to grow on the moon, according to Chinese legend. Interesting. Forward-facing books here, too. Kitab al-Azif. Man, they've got some weird stuff here. Can't even pronounce this one. Who's that? Some famous guy? It's not a person's name. It's a name of a fictional book created by Abdul al -Az uh, uh, al -Hazred. Sorry. It's said to be one of the sources used in the creation of the legendary Book of the Dead, the Necronomicon. Oh. So these are all occult books and stuff. What about up here? This book is called, um, Mind Swap. You mean you could, like, change bodies with someone? Well, I guess it wouldn't... Uh, I guess I wouldn't mind switching bodies with my brother or Junpei too much. But I'd rather die than let Seven switch with me. What the hell? Like I'd ever want to swap bodies with a little brat like... Hey, were you just imagining it? You were. Shut up. Yeah, well, he wasn't the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never been one to like the whole body swap thing. Uh, that's where I was just looking, right? Yep. Okay. Down here, open bulb. Let's look over here. A bunch of books about energy theory. A bunch of books with titles like Black Hole Hypothesis. Children's book. Is it? This is where I got the first children's book, right? Books called Hellenism. The books all seem to be out about history. History of the medieval period. Maybe it's about Sir Lancelot? Isn't he just a story? Don't you think you're gonna find a guy... Uh, I don't think you're gonna find a guy who didn't really exist in a history book. Looks like this one says, Cultural Heritage of Rome. Well, that's gotta be some serious inheritance tax. Hmm. Permian Creatures. I haven't really been looking to the outer edges. Maybe that's where the children's books are. Seems a little fancy for some kind of prehistoric critter. 
Not to mention most of them were like reptiles and amphibians. Without hair, I can't imagine they had much need for perms. That's got nothing to do with this. What about over here? Ah, another children's book. Gotcha. This one. It looks just like the picture book from earlier. The one with the pop-ups. You think they were part of the series or something? They do have the same binding. Book. And search. There's a baseball on this one. Come on, Junpei. Let's see what's in it. I'm gonna uh, go out on a limb here and say it's probably a baseball st- Oh! Head. K kill head. This is a pop-up book. It's got the letters H-E-A-D popping out of it. Okay. Mm, so I would assume the next one's over here. Nope. Uh, up, up, uh, maybe this one over here that's probably behind me? Ancient Gladiators. What's this book doing here? Maybe they were researching human physical limits across history? Okay, the binding looked like another children's one, but it's probably down below. I just have to look. There's a weird... There's a weird book here called Indian Mathematics. It says, Riemann... Hypothesis. What is this? What is there to hypothesize about with a Riemann? I have no idea. Isn't it pretty straightforward? Heavens, no. There are more factors. Length, girth, lubrication, or lack of. It's an, ex it's an exciting and rapidly growing field. Whoa. This one's called Goldbox Conjecture. Conjecture? Well, what's it about? Like magic or psychic stuff or something? <laughs> right. I bet it's about jewelry, isn't it? It may have an odd title, but it's actually a very respectable mathematics book. It deals with one of the unsolved problems of additive number theory. Uh, sorry I said anything. Look, it's... Let's not get into this right now, okay? The, the Pythagorean Theorem. This is a famous one. Sounds like there are a number of books, uh, math books in this section. Yeah, math. Algebraic... Algebraic number theory. Math, huh? There's another book like that over here. You mean something like primary number theory, or analytical number theory, or geometry? Oh my gosh, how did you know? Nobody said anything about those. Well, number theory is usually split into four chief disciplines. And there was a book named Algebraic Number Theory. I, t I took a wild guess that the other three would be there as well. Looks like I was right. Okay, I think that's about that side covered. Can I look at any of these? There are, there are books of all sorts of languages. I can't read them. What about these? Hmm, let's see what we've got here. So many books here. I wonder what this one's- Whoa! What's this? Warm? Oh. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, uh, I'm a- I'm sorry. Hey, what's the deal with this sappy stuff? Hmm. Okay, what about over here? I think I see these books over here. Yes, and children's book right here. Modern Japanese literature, huh? Now up here, agriculture and historical organizations and folklore, and a children's book. Hey, there's another one of those picture books here. Something about these things feels kind of nice, you know? Brings back good memories. I guess even people like Seven were kids once. No shit, you little brat! Hey, guys, cool it. Alright, I think I'm gonna take this picture book with me. Yes, and this one should have the L, R, and K, right? It's got a magic wand on it. Okay. So, what's inside? Well, aren't you going to open it? Pretty sure this is just going to have some page inside. My wow! S, E, 5? Hyphen 5? S, E, hyphen 5. Or... No, that's not it. Can't be a two if the E is going one anyway. One way. Hmm. Or that might be an I or a one. I don't know. Hmm. Looks like another pop-up book. This book has an S, an E, a dash, and a number five sticking out of it. I might be impressed if I was five. Which way am I supposed to look at this L and R and a K? This one, uh... 
LRK. Can't make sense out of them, though. Barge round and kinky? Nah, probably not. <laughs> hmm. There are a bunch of books on folklore and myth here. That was... I still don't understand the whole, like the whole engagement with uh, Clover was about. About the warm book. Okay, let's just put these in here. Small enclosure with nine sides, and there are three of these things that look kind of like music stands. Okay, how about we try putting these picture books on the stands? Then... Uh, Field Drake 5, I think is what it says. How do we know which ones... to put where? And how did we get the R? I don't know. Awesome! It looks like it worked. Way to go, Junpei! Good job, buddy! I'm still confused about the R, but oh well. There's something projecting on the bottom! Those letters, they seem familiar. Yeah, Field Drake 5, I got it. Or Shield Drake, whatever the fuck. Shield Drake 5. Or Shell Drake. It says Shell Drake on the spine of this book. We've got the volume number written on the lower part of the spine. God fuck, do I really have to click the thing? Sheldrake 5? Okay. I think I saw the rest of this collection somewhere. Yeah, I know yeah, where it is. I think it was somewhere around here. Let's go take a look. Okay. Sheldrake. Have you heard of him? Sheldrake, I mean. Yeah, Lotus told me about him. There's a, There's British, a British biochemist named Sheldrake. Sheldrake. He has a rather interesting theory. This one. Morphogenetic fields, which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. Really? From Lotus, huh? Well, Clover also said something to me about that stuff. She did? Yeah, um, what was it? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. <sighs> that girl. I told her not to tell anyone. Why? It's actually saving us right now. You did? Why? Well... Look, man, I didn't push it because we're in a hurry, but I'm kind of sick of this. How about you just tell me, okay? Tell you what? Don't give me that. About <laughs> the experiment. Ugh. Very well, fine. I'll tell you everything. But not here. Let's move to the top floor. Okay. I'm gonna put Sheldrake. I suppose I might as well start by telling you why I kept quiet. And why I made sure Clover did as well. Hmm. To be honest, the explanation is quite simple. Zero told me not to. I had little choice. He didn't walk up and tell me, of course. He gave me a message engraved on a card. Another card, huh? That's a braille card. It looks just like the one you showed us earlier. Is... I would love to compare the two images. Is this a different set of braille? I think so. Because I don't remember this first letter looking like this. So you had two cards? No. Only one. Can it be read upside down? Huh? What do you mean? I thought that card just had some rules for the nonary game on it. Yes, it did. And those were the rules I read you. However... There's more to it. Okay, I'm just dumb. They were not the only thing on the card. Yeah, I'm just dumb then. There was something I didn't read. Well, perhaps I should say, there was something I couldn't read. And that was... Okay, so that must have been what he whispered to Clover, is just don't mention it. Tell no one of the events that took place nine years ago. Tell, and I activate your sister's detonator. So what is happening right now? It's a threat on our lives. Oh, well, um... Well, what about Clover? Did she get a message from Zero Two? I don't believe she did, but... Doesn't it strike you as strange that Zero would shut my mouth, but not hers? I, I guess. Yeah. To be on the safe side, however, I told her it was best not to tell anyone. I mean, Clover was in Nevada. You actually experienced it, right? Still, apparently she told you. That girl. What's wrong with her telling me? I figured some stuff out with the thing she told me. Hmm. I mean, it looks like the whole activate her detonator thing was just a bluff. She's prancing around downstairs happy as a clam now that you're back. Mm-hmm. And I could not be happier for her. That's very true. 
I've decided I can trust you. I've decided to tell you the truth. The chance that Santa is zero is very high. I feel I can assume Santa doesn't have the time to observe us at the moment. And at any rate, even if he were, I very much doubt he would kill us. Why? Clover told me about the four-leaf clover, about the words. If he knew about that, then he was in my group during the first experiment. I'm sure of it. He wouldn't kill us, no matter what the situation was. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Hey, uh, Snake? Yes, I know. You want to know what happened during the experiment? Yeah. How much do you know? Uh, I know that she was in Nevada, you were a part of it, one person died, uh, seven came to rescue you, and that's about it. Clover told me about... I see. The morphogenetic field in the experiments nine years prior. How the experiments had taken place simultaneously at two locations, one being the ship and the other being a building in Nevada. Mm -hmm. And the girl that died during the experiment. She told you all that, did she? Hmm. At any rate, I now know how much you've learned. All that remains for us to determine is who did this and why, right? Yes. Can you tell me what happened? Yes. The people who organized the initial experiment were from a company called Cradle Pharmaceuticals. That we now know is Ace. There were four of them running the show. Gentaro Hongo. Who is Ace? Nagisa Nijisaki. Don't know who that is. Teruaki Kubota. Kagachika Musashido. Hongo was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Huh. Interesting. If this is nine years ago, his hair... It's kind of like the same color as Junpei's. Hmm. Nijisaki was his right-hand man, and did the lion's share of the planning. Nijisaki looks like the replacement for Snake. Kubota led the company's research and development division. Kubota is nine. Nerdy number nine. Musashido was their majority stockholder. And this is Cap. Yeah. So, I did pin them all down. It was these four people who planned the initial experiment. Hmm. Let me simplify it for you. Hongo designed it, and Nijisaki put it all together. Designed it, put it together. Kubota developed the technology required and Musashido provided the cash. Gotcha. Huh, so it's Hongo, Nijisaki, Kubota, Musashido. Of course, more than four people were required to conduct an experiment of this scale. Mm -hmm. To that end, they organized a top secret team to assist them with their research. All in all, they gathered 10 people or so. Those 10 completed their team, and they were able to begin the project. Okay, so nerdy number nine is accounted for, so then, Every one of the uh, of the nine that are listed, two of them are still up in the air as to why we're a part of it. Myself and June. Why? They named it the Nonary Project. The purpose of the experiment was to research the prospect of controlling a human mind through sheer will. The uh, vessel, I suppose you could say. For this control was the morphogenetic field. Huh. Why did the glycerin suddenly begin to crystallize? Why did the crystal structure of EDT undergo a sudden change? Why did the rats improve their puzzle-solving skills with each generation? Experiments with humans produce the same results. The more people who knew the answer to a question, the more there were who could answer correctly without having seen the problem before. Why is that? How could it happen? Hmm. The answer is that the shape of the answer has been stored in a field invisible to the naked eye. And through that field, the resonant event transmits information related to that answer. That's essentially the idea behind morphogenetic fields. Mm -hmm. But that's just a theory. Can't bring yourself to believe it? Yeah. Let's say someone killed another person because the devil told them to do it. Whether the devil exists or not has no relevance to the murder. They believe the devil exists. Whether or not he does is immaterial. So what matters here is that Hongo believed in the morphogenetic field. That's right. But I still don't get it. 
You said they wanted to figure out how to control people, right? That is what you were saying. Yes. So how are they going to do that with a morphogenetic field? I'll keep it simple. Let's suppose 10,000 people have solved a certain problem. Okay. The chance of you knowing that answer, even if no one has told you, will go up. Let's have another example, shall we? Say one million people were to do a handstand right now. Okay. Tomorrow, the chances of you doing a handstand would be higher, even if you had heard nothing of this hypothetical mass handstanding. Mm -hmm. Mankind's thought process and actions are all part of a resonant event. All of the resonant events encoded in the fields are projected onto you. Of course, this assumes you believe in this theory. Do you follow so far? I do, yeah. Yeah. Now, if there was a person who had the same effect as those millions of people, what would happen? If that one person were to do a handstand, other people would find themselves wanting to do handstands as well. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what a person with powers like that would be able to do? Come on, there's no way. Mass genocide or what we've seen in history. I'm not done. Imagine another scenario. Imagine another person. This is an ordinary person. Let's say he does a handstand. What if there was someone who could grab the resonant event he created by doing that and use it to make other people do handstands? What would happen then? Mm. A person who has the power to write to the field, and someone who can read from the same. You could think of them as the writer and the reader, mm -hmm. or the transmitter and the receiver. Or the Q and the A. What would the world be like if there were people with abilities like these? So the transmitter's resonant event can be transmitted through the field and sent to the receiver. And then the transmitter can control the receiver however they wish. It's just another form of communication. That's what you're saying, right? Uh, is, like, there an end goal? Yes. Close enough, at least. Come on, that's just crazy. Well, if you want to prove that, then you'll have to test it first. <laughs> at least, that was how they thought. That was why they decided to do their experiment. That was how the Nonary Project began. By the way, Junpei? Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of the Gansfeld experiment? Actually, yes. Yeah, that was an experiment in telepathy, right? You place a pair of subjects in separate rooms. Then you show one a picture and ask the other what they see. Interesting. I'm impressed. Yes, that is exactly correct. So, why did you bring up the Gansfeld experiment? It was used to screen subjects for the Nonary Project. The hospital in a remote town was affiliated with Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Hmm. Pongo used it to conduct experiments on visiting children in secret. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Some of them he found had potential. He began to gather children that showed promise. Children that seemed as though they might be able to access the field. Was there ever a point in which June and I had an instance where we went to a hospital? I remember the rabbit thing. When did we talk about that? When we went through door three, right? I think. Yeah, we went through door three, and when we were together with a broom or some stupid shit. <sighs> Was it ever mentioned that we too went to a hospital or something? I don't know. Of course, none of them volunteered. They were kidnapped. There were nine pairs of siblings taken, for 18 children total. Siblings, okay. For reasons that were not fully understood at the time, each pair had one transmitter and one receiver. They were split perfectly. As such, the 18 children were split into two groups of nine. The children who were put into group Q were the ones who excelled at transmitting. They were transferred to the mock experiment building known as Building Q in the Nevada desert. Mm -hmm. The children who excelled at receiving were put in group A. And that is, uh, over here, this is Clover, over here, this is, um, Snake. Group A was then placed on the former hospital ship Gigantic. From the experiments he had conducted so far, Hongo had learned the following. There are two things that can increase one's resonance with the fields. The first is epiphany. The other is danger. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been faced with an especially difficult problem and thought about it very long and very hard until finally an answer suddenly appeared in your mind? Mm. 
It may seem obvious to say so, but that is what is meant by epiphany. The information obtained through that epiphany can be easily transmitted through the fields, where it can be easily interpreted. Adding danger to that equation allows for even easier field access. It's like danger is the way that you like tune the radio station to receive the signal, I guess. That's where Hongo came in. They set up a number of puzzles across the gigantic. Mm -hmm. The participants had to solve each one before they could move to the next room. Of course, he hadn't forgotten to include danger. Mm -hmm. He had detonated a bomb on the hull of the gigantic. The children in Group A were forced to play the nonary game as the ship sunk. By forcing the children into a life or death situation, Hongo hoped to increase the likelihood of their tapping into the fields. The children from Group Q, on the other hand, were confined to the mock experiment building, Building Q. Building Q duplicated the interior and puzzles of the gigantic exactly. Every detail was exactly the same. Hongo explained the situation to the children in Group Q. Solve the puzzles you find throughout the rooms. When you have the answers, transmit that information to the children in Group A. If you succeed, they will be able to solve the puzzles and escape. But if you fail, then the gigantic will sink and your brothers and sisters will drown. Those were his orders. Do you know why the astronauts of Apollo 13 were able to return to Earth safely? Uh, no? It was because NASA had access to a replica of the Apollo 13 capsule. Hmm. All of the equipment, the instruments, everything. All of it identical. Everything was just like the real Apollo 13. NASA was able to replicate the situation the astronauts found themselves in. By putting themselves in the same situation, they attempted to solve the problems the astronauts were dealing with. Once they found solutions, they reported their findings to the men aboard the actual capsule. Mm -hmm. That was how they were able to return safely. But they just told them. It's not like they thought of it and then, like, the other people received the thoughts. They actually radioed the stuff, though. It was the same with the gigantic and building Q. The children from Group Q had to use the power of Epiphany to solve the puzzles they found. So now, I am left to wonder, are we, I mean, technically, a few people have died already, but are we left to wonder, are we solving these right now? And it's not like, no, oh, no, we are technically, there is a timer at the end of this, but I don't know if we're doing this the same way and there's someone else that's experimenting with these and we're also receiving signals in some way but if so then why would clover and uh, clover and uh snake be in in the same group if it was like this before they're like this before i don't know and transmit what they learned through the fields the children in group a however they had to access the fields to learn how they might advance to the next stage that is the simplest explanation I can manage. Huh. Hey, Junpei, Snake! How much longer are you two gonna sit around on those bony asses? Sorry. Get down here already! Okay. He's right. Let's go, shall we? We don't have much time. We need to get out of here and soon. Hold it. There's one more thing I want to ask you. There is? Hmm? Are you sure that there were 18 kids? Why? Well, I thought it was only 16. Was that ever mentioned? Oh, yes. That was what they said on the news, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yes. I have no doubt that 18 children were abducted and used in Hongo's experiment. After all, you couldn't exactly play a nonary game with any less, could you? Well, yeah, but are you saying that the news got it wrong? One child did die, as far as we know. One girl. Wasn't that Clover said that? Didn't Clover say that she knew one person died and Seven did say that one person died with him? He had no... Yeah. Seven had no, had no reason to know about uh, uh, Clover. And if someone died over there, so if one dies, the other dies? 
That's why Clover said that. If Snake was dead, she was bound to die soon after, too. Yes, I am. There were two more children. However, they had no relatives that I'm aware of. Oh. I imagine no one filed a police report when they went missing. Oh, God. Is it going to be me and June? They were brother and sister, like Clover and I. Okay. Okay, so no relatives. I thought that I thought uh, me and June having no relation to one another was the no relative. All right. The brother's name was Aoi. Okay. The sister's name was... Her name was... <laughs> Her name was Akane. Mm-hmm. That was the girl who died. Interesting. <laughs> Akane Kurashiki died? Why are you immediately jumping to this? Because it could be a different Akane, because we have no idea about this, but... Oh, well. Nine years ago? Then... It, who is June? No. It's impossible. Is June Santa's sister? Not not like well, brother and sister. Eh, well, it's just more unfolding of the story. It can't be true. Akane isn't that uncommon of a name. If Snake had known her last name, that's a different matter entirely. So they share a name. A lot of other people did too. It doesn't mean anything. It was someone else. Of course it was. It has to be. <laughs> Is something wrong, Junpei? Your breathing sounds strange. <laughs> That's kind of cute that Snake is able to like acknowledge that. Like, are, are you okay? <laughs> oh, uh, no, it's it's nothing. I'm fine. Let's get back down there. All right? <sighs> I couldn't do it. Why didn't I ask? What's her last name? I just couldn't get the words to come out. Okay, so I'm... Oh, that's right. I never even picked up the five book, right? Sheldrake, this is it! This is what the shadow picture was pointing to! But didn't it say five at the end of the shadow picture? Yes, I think we need to find the fifth volume. What the fuck? Well, would you look at that? There's a big red button behind this book. I guess we should press this button. Why are there two doors? Why are there two doors? What was that sound? It sounded like something really big was moving. It came from the top floor. Alright, let's go check it out. Okay, uh... Before I do anything, I know it might piss some people off, but... And I know that I said that I thought that this was going to be the end of the series, but... I want to have one more episode, because then I feel like... Like, the end of this room, whatever it may be, as well as a bunch of story text is going to come in this next episode. So, I'm leaving this episode here. Hopefully you understand where I'm coming from. I just don't want these to drag on for too, too long. Even though that's some of them have gone on for a while. But, uh, that's about, that's about everything that I've wanted to theorize for now. <sighs> June has always been weird with me. But she still interacts with... <sighs> Santa... Santa and June have been together this entire time, always. And then... June and Junpei had a previous past together. They've had moments of rom romantic moments together. Um, I don't... I don't know. There is so much more to this. And I just... I don't know what to expect, honestly. So, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut, and we're gonna go into the next episode. But for now, I have to leave this one off here. So thank you so much for coming out, and uh, I'll leave you with one final message as a final goodbye. And that being, have a nice day.